Hello. Now, a lot of you will know if you follow this channel that I have been caravanning since I was this high and I've been caravanning in this country all along. So I'm not terribly good at stuff for beginners. However, I'm here today with Karen. So a lot of you will know Karen, Travelling K. She is New Zealand's top <laughs> caravan vlogger. Are you not, Karen? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you are. And although you've been to the UK many times before, mm. this is your first time caravanning in the UK. Yes. So I thought it would be great for subscribers to this channel to first, to first of all, check out Karen's channel, Travelling K. We'll link that in the description below. Cool. And then we'll talk to you today about sort of tips for first time caravanners. So if you're thinking of getting a caravan in the UK or if you're going to visit from overseas, whether you're in France, Germany, Belgium, Denmark or New Zealand. even coming over from New Zealand, <laughs> yeah. um, about sort of the cultural differences between campsites here, caravanning here and over in New Zealand and mm -hmm. what you find as a first time caravanner in the UK interesting and what you would like to pass on to the viewers. Sure. So what's the first thing you would well, suggest? Well, the first thing I'd put is, is something that's been on my, I suppose my pain point since coming over and that's the roads. So oh. when you're towing with a big caravan, it's just a bit challenging here <laughs> compared to in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the roads are a little bit narrow. A bit narrow, <laughs> yeah. maybe uns not suitable for caravans. <laughs> no, no, no. And so maybe some of the, the villages are just a little challenging as well. So, so my tip would be pre-plan. Pre-plan. Check out Google Maps with the satellite view and zoom into some of the potentially difficult sections and just check. <laughs> or even easier, if say you, there you got a sites directory, yeah. so if you're in one of the major clubs, like the Caravan and Motorhome Club, Camping and Caravanning Club, mm. or check out the site's website Yes. to see if they've got directions <laughs> on their website. Or where or to in their avoid. <laughs> yeah, so I know a lot of sites have got websites or directories mm. where they give you the recommended route with a caravan. Yes. So you would suggest... Oh yeah. yeah, that's a good tip. That is a very good tip. <laughs> okay, so ignore that sat nav. Folks. Yeah. Yeah. And also I suppose a beginner's tip would be maybe stay at campgrounds close to the A roads or the motorways at the start, just while you're still getting used to towing. Yeah. And then go exploring yeah. the area from there. That's a jolly good idea, yeah. <laughs> I kind of wish I'd done that. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Diving straight in. <laughs> <laughs> You're still here, that's the main yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, everything's still yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got to check out Karen's video about the insane roads in the UK. Because yeah, it's I a bit... The wrong. I did take the bit, wrong road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Whoops. Moving Whoops. on. Yeah, moving yeah, on. Yeah. We'll just forget about that fun. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, what would you say next? Uh, caravan security. What I've found, what I've been warned about in the UK is you need you need proper security on the caravan um, and apparently insurance it's best to have the caravan in storage i think it's better cheaper for your insurance if it's in a storage facility rather than your driveway yeah so you with with security you mean like wheel clamps well, wheel and clamps, yeah. hitch locks yes tracking alarms <laughs> all this kind of thing yeah, yeah. and then with storage <laughs> it's a, what we call a cassawa approved storage yeah, okay. site with cctv and caravan theft is a problem in yeah. the uk not a huge th problem if you take precautions but yeah mm, and true. i guess it's the same in new zealand where most people uh, are spot we we have caravan theft mm. it seems to be for people um taking the caravan into the bush and it's never seen again right but it's not it doesn't seem to be like the secure the wheel locks i've seen in the uk are next level to what i've ever seen in the U new zealand right, like <laughs> right. So. yeah they're pretty good yeah, yeah they haven't quite made it to new zealand yet right yeah so that's an interesting difference <laughs> yes yeah. Yeah. yeah and what next what what other than security well i think for a beginner just being aware of weight distribution in the caravan it kind of took me a little while to kind of understand the whole concept of putting heavy stuff over the wheels and you can put a little bit more on the front, but don't put it all in the back. No. Otherwise, you'll, you'll yeah. potentially wobble all over the place and exactly. have an accident. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. There's a great video, actually, I did with a caravan guard 
um, where we talked about distributing the weight in nice. the caravan. So I'll link to that video in the description below. This is about how to correctly load your caravan. And that was one I did ages ago with Caravan Guard. Good yeah, plan. <laughs> that's a good plan. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's that's a great. I probably tip. should have seen that video before I started caravan. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and then another one, I guess, is being aware of what accessories do you want to buy after the caravan purchase. It's all about accessories. Yeah, yeah, Got and there are there are some some big ones you might want. <laughs> so, so what what sort of accessories have you got in mind then? Well, I know in the UK, uh, a motor mover seems to be a popular okay. extra. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, maybe a lot of people in the United States have never seen these. They're like little remote controls for your yeah. caravan, aren't they? Yeah. So you can m move the caravan off the car with this yeah. remote control car. Yeah, you? perfect yeah. if you don't feel confident reversing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also I find a motor mover, if you're a solo caravaner like we are mm. i find it gives you that little bit of extra confidence so that if you do want to go down that road yeah um well or if you get stuck you know you can just <laughs> you're not quite done your caravan planning. around yeah you can unhitch the caravan <laughs> flip it around and yeah, not yeah. worry too much yeah but then other things are maybe a nice awning like a blow-up awning or something yeah. or a second gas bottle second gas bottle is a good one yeah, yeah. so you do, do you not bother with the second gas bottle in new zealand in new zealand I definitely have uh, too many times I've been halfway through cooking dinner and I've run out of gas. <laughs> so you now have a spare bottle as I well. I have two gas bottles now. That's a yeah, good one. That's cool. it's been a necessary. <laughs> cool. And for me in New Zealand, uh, it seems to be more off grid, staying at non powered sites. So my extras were getting solar panel on the roof, upgrading my batteries, and just being able to handle that type of campgrounds. So do you think over here in the UK we are a little bit more slaves to the electric hookup than you are in New Zealand? I have been surprised at a lot of the the CL campgrounds. Mm. Uh, I, there seems to be an expectation that a campground will have power in a way. Yeah. Mm. From what I've seen, I haven't stayed at every single type of campground, but yeah. the ones I've stayed at just seems to be normal. It seems to be the case as we go along that people seem to rely more and more on a mains hookup mm. and um, I'm with you I prefer to go without a mains hookup mm. a more remote site <laughs> solar power second yeah, battery yeah. all that kind of thing they're my favorite type of campgrounds normally yeah yeah and it'll be interesting too as technology progresses and battery technology progresses mm. electric cars progress and all this kind of thing where a caravan might soon become a little power station on its own yeah, and true. electric hookups might start they might go from powering the caravan to powering the car. We don't know. Uh, it's it's interesting nice. days ahead, isn't it? Yep, that's yeah. a nice idea. Mm. Anything else? What I've experienced over here is there, there's kind of this expectation that you would check your caravan once a year, have it... An annual service. Yeah, an, an, an yeah. annual service. Which Whereas, is a good idea. Yes, I agree. It's a very good idea. Yeah. Whereas I find in New Zealand, it's a bit like wait till something breaks and then attempt to find someone to fix it. It's a bit... Up oh, in the uh, air. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say it's quite a good regime we have here where mm. it's, it's in the culture, I think, of caravanning here to have that annual inspection and it's really yeah. good practice for yeah. gas safety, electrical safety. In my case at the moment, chassis safety, <laughs> but we won't go there right now, folks. <laughs> where catch we'll, it before yeah, it gets too it bad. before it gets catastrophic yes. and phew, yes. I've just had mine caught before it got catastrophic. <laughs> that yeah. could have been challenging. That could have been bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, anything else? Well, one part I really admire in the UK is your ability to caravan from the UK to somewhere like Spain or somewhere warm in Europe. J just the ability to go to other countries yes. with your caravan yes. really easily. You have to drive there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Get on a train or on a ferry yeah. and yeah. I guess you can't do that from New Zealand, can no, you? No, no, we are surrounded by water. And there's no oh. chance of taking a ferry to Australia <laughs> with no. the caravan. No, no. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, we are we are fortunate in the UK and the fact that mm. we can get out of the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With your caravan. <laughs> yeah, and go down to Spain for the winter or yep. even Morocco. Oh, yeah. that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. Is there a different sort of culture with caravanning in New Zealand as there is in the UK? Uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of noticed one big difference is we are so small. We're under 5 million people. So Total population. Total population. 
So our type of campgrounds tend to be a mixture of everything. So yeah. we've got cabins, we've got the area for the motorhomes and caravans, we've got the tent area. So it's, it's kind of just tries to cover all types of holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas you're finding it here, it's more just caravans and motorhomes. Mm. Or yeah. it's the, um, the permanent caravans. Yeah, static caravans. Static caravans, homes, yes. Got, yeah. And we don't really have those either in New Zealand. You don't have static caravans. No, no. It's, it's a cabin mm -hmm. or <laughs> or a tiny house. Yeah. Or a caravan. Oh, oh, right. I like caravans. I'd love a tiny house. Too. Oh yeah. yeah, that's another conversation <laughs> yeah, for another day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd love a tiny house. <laughs> or a house bus is popular as well. Yeah. Yep, yep. Got a few of those. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, Plus, we have uh, freedom camping options, which I know is called wild camping here. Mm -hmm. It's it's still doable in New Zealand, still a way to to travel around. Yeah, I mean it's not legal in England and Wales. It is technically legal in Scotland in certain cases, but the problem is I think because mm. of that the number of people doing it right now, it's kind of becoming a bit sort of let's not do this anymore guys <laughs> because yeah. people are not being responsible. So mm. Um, there is a big debate in New Zealand at the moment about how to keep the locals happy, how to keep freedom camping still going and existing. Yeah, but yeah. it's still there at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as I say, technically it's still there in Scotland as well, but yeah. we don't really encourage that anymore. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, outside of outside of the winter, because sometimes mm. in the winter in Scotland there's no other option. There's no sites open. All so, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So. You said about the, the campsites. I've been to New Zealand twice, um, <laughs> once with a motorhome, once with a caravan. Yeah, amazing. The 10 o'clock checkout. <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> campsites in New Zealand, you have to check out at 10 o'clock. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah. You have to, oh. it's, it seems a bit decadent if they, they change it to 10.30. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> what, I mean, because over here, generally the checkout mm. is 12 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's amazing. I feel <laughs> like I can sleep in and, and do some work in the morning and fluff around before even considering moving. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anyone would think you're on holiday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yes, I mean, that that's another difference, isn't it? I mean, mm. the fact that in New Zealand, if the day you move, mm. you have to get up early in the morning. Yeah, true. <laughs> that is a good point. Yeah. I, I almost feel like it's stuck because of our campgrounds being combined together. Mm -hmm. People in cabins have to check out early, so... Um, they have time to change the linen and clean them. For yeah. some odd reason, they've lumped in caravans with that too, even though you don't have to clean a room or anything. No, no, yeah. no. That's my theory. That's why I think. Yeah, <laughs> and I suppose happen. you've got pitch maintenance as well, maybe. I yeah. mean, do you have hard standing pitches as well as grass? Or? It's a mixture. It depends on the campground. Same here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. <sighs> All right. Well, so I think that's sort of we covered the we touched most of the sort of cultural differences, haven't we, <laughs> I between think so. the two? And yeah. you know those starter tips about mm. planning your route. Oh yes, that, that's yeah. very important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, as I say, please check out Karen's channel, Traveling K, all mm. about traveling around New Zealand. But obviously, you've, you're here in the UK at the moment. Yeah. You're in a nice. <laughs> we're in a Bailey Phoenix at the moment, aren't we? Yes. And you've got a Peugeot. 3008. Yeah. Very nice yep. too. Yeah. <laughs> it's so a nice you, setup. <laughs> it's a very nice setup. Yeah. yeah. Is this like your setup back in New Zealand? Uh, mine's a little bit older than this. Just a little. <laughs> a little bit. A little <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Karen. As I say, please check out Karen's channel, Travelling Kate, in the description below. So please remember, folks, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. And it just leaves me to say from Karen and from me. Thanks for all, for goodness sake. I, I had a mind blank. You can't get the staff these days. You can't get the vloggers. You cannot get the vloggers. I was like, hello. No, no that's wrong. Do, 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 do. Up. You know, do. Just, try, just trying to make a living here. You know? oh, now I'm blushing. It. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, folks. <laughs>